grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome, 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 welcome if you are joining us on Kojiko, welcome if you are joining us on the live stream, and a special welcome to Anne and Bob, who I know are watching at home this morning, and possibly Tony, who is in the Dolomites at the north end of Italy on top of a mountain somewhere. It's a great place to be. Remind me afterwards, and I'll show you a picture that she sent me just recently. Could we take a moment, please, and just in the presence of God and in this holy space that has been so busy over the last few days, have a moment of silence. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, you call us together once again to be your family. You taught us that love is the fulfilling of the law. We pray that as we follow your example, we also might be examples to the world around us that love is in fact the fulfilling of the law. This we ask in your name. Amen. Would you be seated, please? A reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom. Brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentious, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, and carousing. And things like these, I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But the Samaritans did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. They went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me go and bury my father first. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say good farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to them, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as I break open your word to us on a day that will be emotional for many, that you will be with me in my words and that your people will hear your truth and not simply what I say. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Would you be seated, please? We have been looking at St. Paul's letter to the Galatians over the last uh, week or so, two weeks now, and we heard that Paul got really angry with the Galatians because he went to Galatia uh, in sort of the south central part of what's Turkey now, and he, he preached the gospel to them and they got it, and then Paul goes back uh, to his own home, either to Tarsus uh, or somewhere else. And some other people from the church in Jerusalem come out and begin to preach a slightly different gospel. I have to stop. It's been a long time, excuse me, since Allison's been here, but it's even longer since Ozzy has been with us. Welcome, Ozzy. My goodness, it is great to see you here this morning. All right, so. Paul's got angry, he's writing to them, and what he's saying is that it's, it's no good to abide by the law unless you abide by the whole law. But in fact, in Christ, in the sacrifice made for us on the cross, we have been given freedom. In this morning's passage, he says, but wait a minute now, that is not simply freedom to do whatever you want because whatever you want may be in fact what he calls the works of the flesh. And I think the best way to explain that to us is it's not just physical things that may be a problem. Works of the flesh are all those little niggling things that so often come out on the worst side of human nature. Greed, jealousy, Envy, sexuality that is misplaced, 
Now this is Pride Sunday, so let me say that is not male on male sexuality, it is not female on female sexuality, or any of the transgender kinds of things that we honor in the world in which we live. What St. Paul is talking about is prostitution, is leering at women going down the street, is saying to young women in particular, but older women as well, you are dressed inappropriately in too much of a revealing fashion for this particular event. And those things still happen in the world in which we live. Taking advantage of your position of power over someone else to gain some advantage, whether it's sexual or favors or whatever. If you are following the sports news these days, you will know that we have just had a stunning example of exactly that with Hockey Canada. If you are following the news these days, you will know that the Me Too movement has not finished. Those are the kinds of things that St. Paul is talking about. He is not talking about loving, committed, ongoing relationships between human beings. He is talking about the nasty and somewhat evil side of those kinds of things. Taking advantage of someone to make too much money. Oh, I happen to have several cases of bathroom tissue, so I'm just gonna jack the price up by four times during the next shortage. That's the kind of thing he's talking about. We tend to think of flesh as this kind of thing. He's thinking about, St. Paul is thinking about all those nasty kind of things that human beings are able to do, gossip. Did you hear what Kevin did this week? And you know, we can all fall into that. Being a Monday morning quarterback, how many people would like to tell the Jays right now how to win yesterday's game? Or what they should have done to win yesterday's game? I didn't watch the whole thing, I fell asleep. But you get my point. Those kinds of things eke into all of our lives. Those very kinds of things have been used by all of us. All of us, and I don't mean, you know, you in particular, I meant human beings, to separate the gay and lesbian community, to tell them they're not good enough to be with the rest of us, to tell them they're dirty. The problem is that God doesn't make mistakes. Each one of us came into this world being the person we are. We know now, and science tells us, and you know, you can be a Catholic church during Galileo's time and deny uh, the roundness of the earth or the fact that the earth goes around the sun, but we know from science that people do not choose to be either gay or straight, lesbian or straight, transgender or, or, or straight, I guess. I'm not sure what the opposite of that is that they come into the world that way and there are logical, known, medical patterns of things that happen. We know that our bodies are gendered separately from our minds. We know that who we think we are inside is gendered separately in the sense of male or female from our bodies. So you may be a woman but feel, no, I'm a man. I feel like a guy on the inside. The problem is that we have used the sins of the flesh for too many years to make discriminations about those things amongst ourselves. So the reaction of those communities has been to hide. Don't let anyone know. Put on a wig or hide or something like that. I know lots of clergy who will go to a pub and pull out their collar so that nobody knows it's a priest sitting there. Really? If you go to England, that sure doesn't happen. It happens here because we have this sort of thoughts about what clergy should and shouldn't be doing. But again, that's judgment. I really like a cold pint of beer, and my favorite pub is the Merchant Ale House. Now, you won't find me there every Sunday, but you get my point. We have used those very human feelings to abuse other communities. And St. Paul says, wait a minute now, be careful. 
Be slaves to one another in love. And for heaven's sake, if you start to get bitter and angry and sniping at each other, be careful you don't eat each other up. So he has a very clear warning for exactly the kind of behavior that many of us straight, old, white, fat guys have used against the gay and lesbian communities over the years. Each person comes into the world as they are for a reason. And just like the children among us, it's our job to make those people, to help those people feel safe. We can't make anybody feel safe. We can help them feel safe. To help them feel proud of who they are. Not through works of the flesh, but by works of love. I love you unconditionally. It's that agape love that we talked about several months ago. You don't have to like everyone. You have to love everyone. And by doing that, you are freed from the law. Here's one of the, an example from one of the commentators I was reading this week. She said, a father, a husband, does not have to be told not to murder his wife. Any man who is truly in love would not even think of that, unless there's mental illness involved. And yes, okay, there are some tragic circumstances where that has happened, but you don't have to tell me not to murder Tony. You don't have to tell Franz not to murder John. Okay, you might have to. She may feel like hitting him sometimes, and I'm sure that Tony feels like hitting me sometimes, but murder is not part, because of the love. There is enough love there that it transcends that moment of sheer frustration and anger. And so we are freed from that rule. I don't need the rule, thou shalt not kill in my life. I have been freed from that rule because the love that I have for everyone is enough to get me through. Even the people I get really angry about, Ricky being one of them sometimes, my friend Ricky, some of you will know him. That's the catch. Are you filled with love in this sense enough that you can be freed from the law? So Paul's answer is probably not. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Let the Holy Spirit, as I have said before with Mr. Putin, infect your life because that is the only way that you are going to have enough love in your life through all those various circumstances that that will not only weigh you down but annoy you to the point where you'd love to take a swat at someone or maybe love to tell a nasty rumor about them or maybe love to call them down. It's the Holy Spirit that will engender in all of us enough love to get through those moments. Sometime this week, find someone you know who's part of the LGBTQ2 plus whatever community and tell them I love you. Not in a romantic way, not in a familial way. There's several different definitions of love that we have talked about but in a way that lets them know I respect you. I may not agree with you on everything, but I respect you for who you are, and I will help you be who you are called to be in Christ. Please help me be who I am called to be in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We hold before God, in prayerful support, Francis of Rome, Justin of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, Anne, the Archbishop of Ontario, Susan, our bishop, and all those who work at Cathedral Place, Sheila, the Archdeacon of Lincoln, Kevin, our rector, Philip, John, and Jason, our honorary assistants, Aaron, Charles, Tim, and James, our wardens. God of love, who knows us as we truly are, made in your image and beloved by you, may we pray by responding to the words, 
God of love, with hear our prayer. We pray for people of varying sexualities and gender identities, that they may love and be loved, and that we might create communities where love is nurtured and human dignity restored. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are still in the closet, who must hide for fear of reprisal, and whose lives are not safe. May they know your love for them remains true even when they are hidden from view. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have suffered rejection of family and friends because of their sexuality or gender identity. May they have grace and courage to find new ways forward and receive the gift of chosen family. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose lives are bound in mutual love, but whose existence has only been recently recognized by the Church and by governments. With gratitude for institutions that move slowly but do move, God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church that our leaders may proclaim the gospel of love and find a way to welcome the many gifts of all people as we work towards the realm of God. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of two SLGBTQIA plus organizations who provide life-saving services, advocacy, and education, often with minimal support. May they find the strength and ability to continue their vital work. God of love, hear our prayer. We repent of the ways in which the Church has caused harm towards the two SLGBTQIA plus peoples. Help us to hear their voices and to work with them in proclaiming radical acceptance. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, particularly those who are victims of hatred or self-loathing, taught by a church and society which did not love them. God of love, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the courage of those who risk public ridicule and hatred and continue to insist on showing us that God is present wherever there is love. God of love, hear our prayer. We rejoice in a rainbow world where all people are made in God's image, and we work towards a time and place when all may truly live as children of God. God of love, hear our prayer. God, we continue to dream of a world in which your love for all is revealed and made known. May you work within each of us as we build communities of acceptance and love and so establish your reign on earth. We pray all of this in the name of the one who paved a pathway of unconditional love, of welcoming the outcast, and of celebrating two, true inclusion, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.